In 1937, a penniless 15-year-old Japanese boy found himself at the doorstep of a little-known auto repair shop in Tokyo, Japan. The shop's owner, uncertain of the boy's skill for such a trade, tasked him with other chores like cleaning and babysitting. Little did the world know that this determined, poor boy would craft a legacy, etching his mark on history. Advancing through the years, that same boy, now an iconic figure named Sochiro Honda, established himself as a formidable presence in the automobile industry. The young boy, driven by a resolute spirit, moved steadily toward a destiny that would echo through generations. From his humble beginnings, Honda not only rivaled major car manufacturers on a global scale, but also claimed the title of the world's largest motorbike manufacturer. This is the untold story of how a seemingly ordinary Japanese boy, against all odds, evolved into the visionary force behind the multi-billion dollar brand, Honda Motors. Soichiro Honda, Humble Beginning Soichiro Honda was born on November 17, 1906, in the poverty-ridden village of Komyo Shizuoka, situated in Hamamatsu. He was born into a world defined by scarcity and the aftershocks of World War II, which left Japan in rubles. Soichiro Honda's family, like many others, struggled to overcome the challenges of rebuilding amidst resource constraints in the aftermath of the conflict. His father, Gihei Honda, was a local blacksmith who also fixed bicycles on the side, and his mother, Mika Honda, was an accomplished weaver raised in difficult economic situations. Soichiro Honda's early life was marked by challenges and hardship. He was the first son, and growing up, he tragically lost five siblings to health issues, an experience that undoubtedly shaped his perspective on life. Soon, he began to have a profound fascination with machines, and at the age of eight, a pivotal moment occurred when he heard an intriguing rumble in his neighborhood. Investigating the source, he encountered a Ford Model T, a big piece of strange machinery rolling along on four wheels. The sight of this machine deeply impressed him and ignited a lifelong passion for machinery. His fascination led him to acquire practical skills, such as wetting the blades of farm machinery and repairing bicycles. Despite his love for mechanics, he was not interested in formal education. Instead, he dedicated most of his childhood to assisting his father in their bicycle repair business. This choice resulted in a strained relationship with traditional schooling, evident in his disinterest and subsequent poor academic performance. Unwilling to confront the disapproval of his family over his poor grades, Soichiro resorted to forging his family's stamp on grade reports, a deception that would later have consequences. The consequences were swift and harsh when his father discovered the forged reports. Soichiro faced punishment, kneeling on his knees for an entire day without lunch. This punishment served as a lesson but did little to diminish his passion for machines. As a little child, Honda was fascinated by the first car that appeared in his village. Throughout his life, he frequently mentioned how he could never forget the distinct smell of its oil, describing it as perfume. On another occasion, he borrowed one of his father's bicycles to witness a demonstration of an airplane by pilot Art Smith, which cemented his love for machinery and innovation. However, in 1922, at the age of 15, Soichiro's life took a decisive turn. Encountering an advertisement for Art Shokai, a Tokyo-based automobile servicing company, he saw an opportunity to pursue his passion professionally. With unwavering determination, he wrote a letter inquiring about the job and, to his delight, received a positive response. Seizing the chance to follow his dreams, Soichiro Honda made a bold decision to drop out of school, leave home, and embark on a journey to Tokyo. Early Experiences When Soichiro arrived in Tokyo, the bustling city overwhelmed him with its fast-paced and distinct urban life a stark contrast to the quiet village he hailed from. His initial disappointment surfaced when he discovered that the job awaiting him at Yuzo Sakakibara's shop involved babysitting the owner's child, a task that yielded no financial gain over the following months. Despite the menial nature of the work, Soichiro clung to the job, driven by the fear of returning home as a failure and facing the judgment of his parents. Soichiro's frustration grew as he yearned for more meaningful work. However, 
As time unfolded, the demands on Sakakibara's automobile business soared, prompting him to enlist Soichiro for assistance. Initially relegated to mundane tasks, Soichiro's perseverance and dedication gradually propelled him upward until he earned the trust of the owner, emerging as a skilled and trusted mechanic within the company. Recognizing Soichiro's potential, Sakakibara took the young man under his wing, imparting not only mechanical expertise, but also insights into the business side of the automotive industry. The auto repair shop became not just a workplace, but a classroom where Soichiro refined his mechanical skills and learned the key aspects of the automotive world. Although Sakakibara's repair work included both automobiles and bicycles, cars were not as popular then as they are today. Not only were automobiles a luxury that only people of the upper class could afford, but most of the automobiles around at the time were foreign-made. Also, his exposure to a diverse range of automobiles, including Lincoln, Mercedes, Daimler, and various motorcycles, broadened his understanding of the evolving automotive industry. The diligent young mechanic strived to expand his knowledge, devoting himself to honing his craft and mastering the intricacies of the vehicles he encountered. Also, it was within Sakakibara's workshop that Soichiro's passion for motorsports began to take shape. During this period, motorsports were gaining rapid popularity across Europe, America, and Japan. In 1923, Sakakibara and his team, including Soichiro, embarked on the construction of racing cars. Their first creation, the Art Daimler, featured a second-hand Daimler engine. The subsequent model, named Curtis, utilized an engine salvaged from an American Curtis biplane, integrated into the chassis of the Mitchell, another American car. This innovative creation participated in the fifth Japanese Motor Car Championship in 1924, securing a remarkable first position with Sakakibara's brother as the driver, and Soichiro as the accompanying engineer. This triumph marked a pivotal moment for the 17-year-old, solidifying his love for motorsports as a guiding force in his life. The auto repair shop, once a place of routine maintenance, transformed into a workshop of discovery, where Soichiro's inventive spirit flourished. Engaging in practical experiences enabled him to understand the details of how machines work, establishing the groundwork for the innovative mindset that would ultimately shape his career. Soichiro Honda's Struggle and Success As Soichiro Honda entered his 20s, he became known for his wild and carefree lifestyle. He was often seen enjoying the company of geishas, throwing extravagant parties, and even dancing nude at his wedding. However, his adventurous spirit sometimes led to accidents, like the incident where he accidentally knocked a geisha out of a window, causing a town-wide electrical outage. Subsequently, in 1926, Soichiro faced a pivotal moment when he was drafted for military service. However, a medical examination revealed his colorblindness, exempting him from military duty and allowing him to continue his work at Art Shokai. This twist of fate set the stage for an unforeseen journey. By 1928, Yuzo Sakakibara, recognizing the potential of expanding his business, decided to establish a new Art Shokai branch in Hamamatsu. Entrusting the responsibility to his adept apprentice, Soichiro, Sakakibara saw in him the qualities necessary to navigate this new venture. He believed there was no better man to leave in charge than his young apprentice. At the age of 21, Soichiro was called upon to run the new branch. The first year proved challenging for Soichiro's repair shop as customers couldn't trust their cars with a young newcomer. Consequently, he had to rely on neglected repair jobs from other shops. Undeterred, Soichiro utilized his accumulated knowledge and skills, gradually turning the tide. By the 1930s, the once solitary venture had evolved into a bustling operation with a staff of 30. The branch experienced remarkable growth in the following years, compelling Soichiro to enlist his wife's help in managing the expanding enterprise. Although renowned as a skilled mechanic, Soichiro's prowess extended beyond the workshop. He was also a remarkable racing driver, setting himself apart from his peers. Within his workshop, he crafted the Hamamatsu race car, achieving a notable feat by clocking a speed record of 120 kilometers per hour. This record had stood unchallenged in Japan for two decades, 
Yet, racing in that era posed far greater risks than the relatively safer sport we know today. In June 1936, tragedy struck as Honda faced a severe crash while racing the Hamamatsu in Tokyo's suburbs, narrowly escaping death. Soichiro endured a fractured left arm, a dislocated shoulder, and facial injuries. Despite spending months recuperating in the hospital, he astonishingly returned to the racetrack a mere four months later. However, frequent conflicts with his wife and father, coupled with dissatisfaction within the family, prompted Soichiro to decide to quit racing eventually. Subsequently, as time passed, Honda became increasingly tired of the routine repair work. Eager to venture into car parts manufacturing, he envisioned transforming the Art Shokai Hamamatsu branch into a dedicated entity for this purpose. Unfortunately, the company's shareholders disagreed with his proposal. They perceived the existing repair shop orders as profitable and were averse to risking resources on what they deemed an unnecessary venture. Not relenting, Soichiro charted his own path. In pursuit of his manufacturing aspirations, he founded the Tokai Seiki Heavy Industry, specializing in piston rings. Notably, he entrusted the presidency of his newly established company to a close confidant, Shichiro Kato. This pivotal decision set the stage for his transformative venture into the world of automotive innovation and entrepreneurship. The Transition In their relentless pursuit of innovation, Sochiro and Kato embarked on a challenging journey with the establishment of the Art Piston Ring Research Center. Sochiro, dividing his time between managing the Hamamatsu branch and dedicating his nights to piston development, bore the weight of their ambitious venture. The toll on his health became evident as the years unfolded, with his tireless efforts causing a significant loss of weight and a transformation in his appearance, reflecting the stress he endured. Despite persistent setbacks, a turning point emerged when Soichiro, recognizing the need for deeper knowledge, enrolled as a part-time student at the Hamamatsu Industrial Institute, focusing on the intricacies of metallurgy this educational endeavor, undertaken in the late 1930s, marked a pivotal chapter in his quest for a breakthrough. In 1939, his perseverance bore fruit as he successfully crafted a functional piston, a significant achievement that instilled confidence in his vision. Empowered by his groundbreaking design, Soichiro made a bold decision. In that same year, he bid farewell to Art Shokai, entrusting the branch to capable trainees and fully committed himself to his new growing enterprise. The transition marked a new phase as Honda intensified his efforts in piston production. However, the journey to perfection was far from smooth. Despite churning out pistons day in and day out, the quality fell short of the standards needed. Toyota, recognizing Soichiro's potential, approached him for piston production. Yet, out of the 50 submitted, only three met Toyota's stringent criteria. Despite this setback, Soichiro remained determined. His resilience shone through as he embarked on a years-long expedition across Japan. His mission was to glean insights from steel-making companies and universities, enhancing his understanding of manufacturing piston rings and pushing the boundaries of his expertise. Encouraged by newfound confidence in his expertise, Soichiro ventured into another attempt. The outcome surpassed all expectations. Not only did his latest pistons meet stringent quality control standards, but they also sparked a surge in orders from every corner of the country. The demand was so overwhelming that the company found itself hiring approximately 2,000 individuals in a frantic effort to keep pace with the soaring orders. Soichiro and his company were basking in the glow of success. The future looked promising until another tragedy struck again. The Setback as Japan became involved in the Pacific War in 1941, Soichiro's company found itself under the direct command and control of the Ministry of Munitions. The following year, Toyota's involvement took a significant turn as they acquired 45% of the company's equity, leading to Soichiro's demotion from president to the role of senior managing director. The war's toll intensified as male employees, crucial to the company's operations, were drafted into military service, leaving behind a workforce in disarray. Determined to weather the storm, Soichiro tirelessly sought ways to keep his company afloat. However, 
The challenges multiplied as clear signs of impending defeat loomed over Japan. In 1944, the air raid sirens in Hamamatsu intensified, signaling the imminent danger the city faced. The inevitable struck when Soichiro's company bore the brunt of a direct bomb blast, resulting in the catastrophic destruction of the factory. The year 1945 brought yet another calamity as the Nankai earthquake rocked the region, causing the collapse of the Iwanta plant. The cumulative impact of these wartime adversities left Soichiro's once thriving enterprise teetering on the brink of collapse. His company, as well as his investment, got destroyed, and everything vanished. The bomb destroyed everything, but it wasn't able to destroy or even touch Honda's belief in strength. The war finally came to an end in August 1945, but the aftermath proved to be a grim reality for Soichiro, who had nearly lost everything. After the war, Soichiro made a strategic decision. In 1946, he sold the remnants of his company to Toyota for 400,000 yen. Publicly announcing his intention to take a break and figure out what the future would hold as Japan was left in ruins and his dreams were about to be shattered. The Breakthrough One. Year after the war ended, Japan found itself grappling with a severe economic downturn, plunging its citizens into the harsh realities of scarcity. Basic necessities like food, clothing and shelter were in short supply, and resources were strictly rationed. Suichiro faced the stark challenge of even obtaining enough gasoline to drive his car to the market and procure essential food for his family. Amidst these dire circumstances, Suichiro stumbled upon a generator engine once belonging to the Japanese Imperial Army, originally used to power a wireless radio during the war. Intrigued by its mechanics, an innovative spark ignited within him. The question surfaced, what if he could attach this engine to a bicycle? While not a novel concept, motorized bicycles were already common in Europe. Soichiro recognized the pressing need for affordable transportation in post-war Japan. In 1946, leveraging his old warehouse, Soichiro established the Honda Technical Research Institute with a singular mission, to explore the feasibility of creating motorbikes. Leading a team of 12, he transformed his vision into reality assembling motorbikes from salvaged engines and spare parts. These makeshift bikes quickly captured the public's attention, triggering a surge in orders from various corners of the country. Facing dwindling supplies of used engines, Soichiro pivoted to a groundbreaking move e, designing and developing his own engine. In 1947, he unveiled the Type A engine, marking a significant milestone e, as the Honda name was engraved on a machine for the first time. The Genesis of Honda Motors With all his strength and belief, Honda again gave a new start to his life. He started working again and formed his company in 1948, to which he gave the name Honda Motors. This time he started working towards the desire and dream that he had seen long back. He started his motorcycle manufacturing company. He was very much interested in racing and bikes. Hence, he began making motorcycles at the start. Faced with the need for additional funds to scale up his production, Suichiro devised a strategic plan. He penned an open letter addressed to all 18,000 bicycle shop owners across Japan, outlining his vision for revitalizing the nation. In this letter, he proposed a solution to reignite Japan's momentum. The outreach yielded encouraging responses from 3,000 bicycle shop owners who resonated with his vision. Their positive feedback not only conveyed support, but also translated into crucial financial backing, enabling Soichiro to kickstart production and initiate the first shipments of his innovative creations. In 1949, Honda celebrated a significant milestone with the release of its inaugural complete motorcycle, the Model D. While this achievement marked a notable success for the company, the Model D's substantial size and weight limited its appeal, resulting in relatively few purchases. Unwilling to settle for mediocrity, Sochiro Honda took on the challenge of refining the motorcycle. Determined to create a more accessible and efficient model, Sochiro stripped down the original design and dedicated extensive hours to craft a smaller and lighter version. After three years of persistent trial and error, his efforts culminated in the creation of the Super Cub. This compact motorcycle proved to be a game-changer, garnering widespread popularity and even earning the prestigious Emperor's Prize. 
as Honda surged ahead, a pivotal collaboration emerged with investor Takeo Fujisawa, whose financial backing and strategic insights provided essential support for Honda's growth. This partnership laid the cornerstone for the establishment of the Honda Motor Company. In 1958, the Super Cub made its debut in the United States, boasting an enticing price tag of just $295, only a quarter of the cost of other American motorcycles. This competitive pricing, coupled with Honda's astute marketing and engineering prowess, propelled the Super Cub to extraordinary success. In a remarkable feat, it soon surpassed sales of both Triumph and Harley-Davidson in their home markets solidifying Honda's position as a trailblazer in the global motorcycle industry. As time progressed, Sochiro Honda not only expanded his motorcycle brand, but also ventured into the competitive world of racing. During this era, racing wasn't just a sport. It served as the paramount stage for manufacturing companies to showcase their automotive prowess to a global audience. Soichiro, driven by an insatiable curiosity and ambition, traversed the globe attending races, meticulously studying and analyzing the motorcycles of his competitors. His approach was unique. Every benchmark set by rivals became a challenge for Honda to surpass. This relentless pursuit of excellence transformed Honda motorcycles from a disappointing debut at their first international race in 1954 to a remarkable achievement where they bagged the manufacturer's team prize at the illustrious 1959 Isle of Man TT the biggest motorcycle race in the world. Building on this success, Honda secured another victory at the Isle of Man TT two years later, firmly establishing the Honda name on the map. By the 1960s, Honda had ascended to the pinnacle, becoming the world's largest motorcycle company. Following the introduction of the Honda Dream in 1949, the company had produced an impressive total of 10 million motorcycles by 1968. Yet for Suichiro, the title of the largest motorcycle company wasn't the ultimate goal. Since the tender age of eight, he harbored a big ambition, which is to enter the car-making industry. Dream Fulfilled When Soichiro declared his intention to enter the automobile market, numerous individuals cautioned him, asserting that it posed a significant risk for the company and that focusing solely on motorcycle production might be a safer path. During this period, Japan already had established automotive giants like Nissan, Toyota, and a handful of other companies, fiercely competing in the automobile market. At that time, the Department of Trade did not like this idea because, as per the department, the market was full of car-making and manufacturing businesses, and they all were successful, so they thought there would be no place for Soichiro Honda's startup. But Honda didn't listen to them, and as always, he listened to his heart and brain and started working toward it, so he started working on its prototype. He made such an efficient and robust model at the time, which was liked by everyone, and even the department liked it a lot. Similarly, he proved everyone wrong and made his place even in the car market. In 1963, Honda ventured into the automobile industry with the introduction of its first vehicle, the T360 Mini Truck. This compact pickup truck, while reliable, struggled to gain significant traction in the market. Undaunted by challenges, Honda followed up with its first sports car, the S500, featuring a two-door roadster design and a four-speed transmission capable of reaching speeds up to 80 miles per hour. Despite its compact size, the S500 offered a smooth and enjoyable driving experience. Regrettably, only around 1,000 300 units of this model were produced, rendering it one of Honda's rarest cars. Mirroring the approach taken with their motorcyclists, Honda boldly entered the world of racing with its cars. The Honda RA271 made its Formula One debut at the 1964 Belgian Grand Prix, paving the way for the RA272, which clinched a first place victory at the 1965 Mexican Grand Prix. Despite this early racing success, Honda faced stiff competition in the broader automotive market. Temporarily stepping away from racing, Honda shifted its focus to producing one of the most successful cars in the automobile industry, the Honda Civic. In 1972, Honda unveiled a revolutionary model that would go on to capture the hearts of consumers worldwide. Over the subsequent years, 
this new offering emerged as one of the most sought-after cars globally. Its unprecedented success, particularly in European and American markets, can be attributed to the oil crisis that swept across the globe during the 1970s. Faced with fuel shortages on a global scale, Soichiro Honda devised an innovative solution, Compound Vortex Controlled Combustion, abbreviated as CVCC. This groundbreaking fuel management method allowed vehicles to cover longer distances while minimizing fuel consumption, a crucial advantage during the energy crisis. The Honda Civic not only addressed the challenge of fuel efficiency, but also took a proactive stance on environmental concerns. Recognizing the pollution issues caused by exhaust gases, Honda integrated catalytic converters into its vehicles, a forward-thinking move that set them apart from other major automakers of the time. As a result, Honda rapidly gained popularity in the competitive automobile market. While the Honda Civic gained traction due to its efficiency and environmental consciousness, it was the introduction of the Honda Accord that truly altered the automotive landscape. Even though Americans initially turned to the Civic out of necessity during the fuel crisis, it was the Accord that emerged as a game-changer, reshaping consumer preferences and solidifying Honda's position as a leader in the evolving automotive industry. The Honda Accord made its initial entrance into the automotive scene as a compact hatchback before evolving into a lineup of sedans. Building upon the fuel-efficient foundation established by the Civic, this new model offered a superior and more moderate size. With its expanded interior space and enhanced comfort, the Honda Accord quickly ascended to become one of the best-selling sedans in automotive history. As the 1980s dawned, Honda Motor Company solidified its position as the third-largest car producer in Japan. However, this was just the beginning of their global ascent. By the decade's conclusion, Honda had not only maintained its standing as the third-largest car company in Japan, but had also surged to become the third-largest globally. This meteoric rise in the automotive industry showcased Honda's commitment to innovation, efficiency, and consumer satisfaction, firmly establishing it as a major player on the world stage. The end of an econ Soichiro Honda once said, Looking back on my work, I feel that I was doing nothing more than making mistakes, blunders, and serious omissions, but I am proud of my achievements. Although I made one mistake after another, my mistakes and failures never occurred for the same reasons. Eventually, Sochiro Honda retired from the company in 1973 and later passed away on August 5, 1991, from liver failure. Honda has now expanded into multiple industries, including jets, boat engines, power equipment, and robots, to name a few. Honda possessed distinctive qualities that set him apart, qualities that are not commonly found in most individuals. It was these unique attributes that played a pivotal role in both his personal success and the success of his company. His motorbike company has been the biggest in the world from 1959 till now and has made the world's most combustion engine. His company's motorbikes still won many motorbike races, which was his dream. Aside from cars and bikes, Honda also manufactures marine engines, watercraft, generators, garden equipment, and even aerospace parts. The success of the Honda company goes directly or indirectly to Soichiro and his qualities. He failed in school but excelled with tools and machines. He was made to babysit, but his dream of becoming a mechanic kept him going. The Second World War destroyed his factory, but he stood up and became the face of post-World War Japan's grit and innovation. Soichiro's journey from a disappointed babysitter to an integral figure in the world of motorsports showcases the transformative power of dedication and mentorship. His early experiences laid the foundation for a remarkable career that would later lead to the establishment of Honda Motor Company and solidify his legacy as a visionary in the automotive industry. Soichiro Honda's remarkable life story continues to inspire generations and remains a beacon of entrepreneurship and innovation in the automotive world. Thank you for watching. We hope you found this story educative and inspiring. Please remember to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on our captivating stories. See you in our next video.